Welcome back, friends. Irla here with a relationship Reddit story about a woman who's angry with her cheating fiance. She wants revenge and she's gonna use his dad to get it. So she's 29 and her fiance is 28. And she says, until a couple of months ago, I thought I was in a happy relationship with my fiance, Scott. Well, that changed when he didn't come home after work one night out. I was worried about him, so I phoned some of his friends in the morning. They didn't know where he was, or at least didn't want to tell me. Eventually, the girlfriend of one of his colleagues who had been with them that night told me that he had gone home with some girl named Kimberly, the office sk <laughs> The office skank, who Scott had previously told me was notorious for having slept with half the guys in the company. I was stunned and refused to believe it. When he eventually came home, I asked where he'd been and he told me that he slept at his friend Josh's place. I told him I called Josh, who said he hadn't seen him. Then I said, so did you have fun effing Kimberly? And I started bawling. He panicked and stumbled for an excuse. Get out, I screamed, and then I threw the first thing I could at him. In the following few days, I cried more than I care to admit. And in my weaker moments, I thought about giving him another chance, then my thoughts turned to revenge. I wanted to make him feel the way he made me feel, and I wondered hypothetically who would be the worst person I could get with to get back at him. He didn't have a brother, and his friends were all jerks, so I thought, well, what about his dad? <laughs> <laughs> no way is she about to get with a dad. And if she does, what kind of a dad is this? But anyway, she says, It was a ridiculous idea that made me laugh for the first few days. Scott's mom, Debbie, who's 51, is a wench anyway. Ever since we first started dating, I was never good enough for her only son. She'd always make snide comments about me or try to put me down, and Scott would invariably take his mother's side in any disputes. It was the thought of Debbie coming home and finding me with her husband that really started to get me thinking. Her staring at me with that trademark look of disapproval on her face gave me the giggles. I've never really been into older men, but I found the idea intriguing. I'd always liked Jeff, he's 53 years old, and he was the opposite of his wife, just a chill guy who'd always been good to me. He's about six feet tall and has salt and pepper hair. He worked his whole career in construction, so he's in decent shape for his age, but isn't somebody I'd ever thought about in that way. Would he say the same about me? I was pretty sure I'd caught him checking me out in the past. Pretty sure? I wonder if he was really checking her out or if she's one of these narcissistic chicks who just thinks every guy who looks her way is into her. I guess we'll find out in a minute. So she continues, The more I thought about Jeff, the less ludicrous the idea seemed. I asked myself hypothetically, could I really ever see myself getting with him? And to my surprise, the answer with how eager I was for some bedroom action made me feel like, yes, I definitely could and was quite likely to do so. I'd love to see what him and his wench of a mother think about that. The idea got me pretty excited down there, but I knew it was just a fantasy that I'd never actually go through with. Although I did do some solo stuff while imagining how the scenario would play out. So the next time Scott called me, he said he wanted to fix things, but somehow that only made things worse. He said it didn't mean anything, that it wasn't a big deal, and that his mom thinks I was being unreasonable. I can't stand when moms or dads try to get involved in their kids' relationships, and so many people have problems in their relationships just because of the way their parents behave or because their parents don't like the person that they're with. In my opinion, parents need to just stay out unless there's some serious problem happening. She says, how effing dare she? Okay, Debbie, let's see how reasonable you think it is when I get with your husband. In a fit of anger and having no Fs left to give, I decided to go for it. At this point in my mind, I was definitely going to F Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I realize now that this made me no better than Kimberly, but at this point I was past caring. And trust that I'm fully aware of how absurd this idea was, but none of these people are going to be in my life anymore anyway, so what was the worst that could happen? I wasn't planning on telling Scott and Debbie. I'm not a complete psycho. The dirty little secret would just be my satisfaction. I had no idea if Jeff would even go for it anyway, but I was excited to try. I deserved some fun after what Scott had done to me, and Jeff deserved a naughty little reward for putting up with Debbie. <laughs> for putting up with Debbie for 30 years, so I intended to give him one. Every Tuesday, Debbie attends meetings of a committee that she's on, some group of local Karens that like to involve themselves in other people's business. <laughs> Every week she'd be out for a couple of hours and Jeff would be home alone. This would be my window of opportunity. I waited in my car for 15 minutes after Debbie left, trying to work up the courage to ring the doorbell. I'd never done anything like this in my life before, especially not with a married man twice my age who until a week ago was going to be my father-in-law. I'm not a very confident woman in that way and I'd only been with two other guys before Scott. Every time I lost my nerve, I thought about how angry Scott had made me and the constant disapproval from Debbie, but it was the taboo of leading Jeff astray that gave me the courage to get out of the car. I was physically excited in a way that I hadn't ever been before, trembling with nerves but also incredibly eager downstairs. It was cold and I was underdressed so I quickly skipped up the driveway, I hesitated for a moment and then rang the doorbell. I'm only 5 foot 6 normally, but my heels had me another 3 inches. 
I was wearing a split thigh blue dress that showed a lot of skin. I'd had my hair done earlier that day, my makeup looked good, and everything down there was freshly shaven. And this, fellas, is why you never mess with a girl's head the way this Scott guy did. Because they're always going to seek revenge and try to live it out in the worst way possible. But she continues. Eventually, the door opened. Jeffrey was surprised to see me, standing there open mouthed for a moment. If he wondered why I was dressed the way I was, he didn't say anything. I brought back some of Scott's things, I said, shivering as I handed him the bag. I thought you could pass them on to him. I don't want to see him. He invited me in out of the cold, as I knew he would. So it's really over then, huh? He asked. He cheated on me, I sobbed. It wasn't hard to turn on the tears, because I was still upset about what had happened. Jeff seemed torn between arguing his son's case and disappointed in his behavior. He's quite a reserved man, not really good with emotions, and didn't know how to deal with his son's distraught ex. He placed a hand on my shoulder and gave me a sympathetic look. I took that as my cue to move in for a hug. He was uneasy and held me loosely. I wrapped my arms around him tighter so that our bodies were pressed against each other and I sniveled on his shoulder. I kept holding on as Jeff's discomfort increased. Eventually he announced he would make us some coffee and released himself from my awkward embrace. I sat on the sofa and waited for him to come back from the kitchen with the coffee and when he returned he sat on the other side of the sofa opposite of me. That didn't suit my intention, so I got up and sat right next to him. We talked about the last four years that we'd known each other since Scott and I got together. I leaned against him so that I was looking up at him as we talked. I positioned myself so that whenever he looked at me, he could get a good view of what was going on behind the top part of my dress. He was trying not to make eye contact. As we talked, I innocently let my hand drop so I was touching his thigh, and I could sense him tensing up slightly, but he didn't say or do anything. After a little while, I moved it slightly higher. It was subtle and he must have thought he was imagining it. I told him how much I appreciated him and that I was sad we weren't going to see each other anymore. And then I made my move. He froze for a minute as he tried to figure out what was happening. I clearly wasn't being direct enough, so I started to get more aggressive and then I could tell he was getting excited. Flustered, he stood up and apologized, although he hadn't done anything wrong. He told me he was flattered, but that he couldn't do this. He was a better man than his son. I felt bad for making him so uncomfortable and I apologized, then left. I got back in my car and cringed with embarrassment at my pathetic attempt to do what I did. But I was also so unbelievably excited in that moment. It only lasted a few minutes, but I definitely knew he wanted me. <laughs> um, obviously he didn't, or at least not to the degree that you did. She says, the whole thing had me so excited and eager for action that I went home and had some solo fun. And the best part was that I knew that he was at home doing the same thing, thinking about me. Bro, this chick sounds like a complete narcissist. Like, she had this whole plan to go get with this guy, try to ruin his marriage and his relationship with his son. Then when it didn't work out because he was actually a good man, which good on him for not going for this. I mean, women like to treat men or talk about men as if they're all creeps. And sure, there are definitely a lot of creeps out there, but I imagine that most dads would have done the same thing that this dad did. So I commend him for not following through with this, not only being faithful to his wife, but also not betraying his son. I mean, he obviously knew what she was up to. He knew exactly what she was going for. He didn't fall for it, which is good for him. And the fact that she's sitting there First, she was convinced that he was into her before she even tried to do this, saying that she was pretty sure he was checking her out, which she probably wasn't. And then when she tried to go for it, he clearly turned her down, wasn't into it. And she goes home and gets excited about the idea that he was in fact into it. Just imagining that this guy was actually into her when clearly he wasn't. It's like, girl, get over yourself. What this Scott guy did to her definitely wasn't cool and he shouldn't have done it. But for her to react like this and try to ruin not only his life, but also his mom's and his dad's, when his dad was innocent in all this, he didn't, according to her, he was cool to her the whole time. Doing this was actually going to hurt Jeff the most. Although if he had gone through with it, it would have been his own fault. But the fact that she would even try to do this spiteful crap is just nonsense. She should have just let it go, moved on and been done with it and not embarrassed herself like this or brought her down to that level. But I guess that's some women for you. Like they say, hell hath no fury. But that's all I got to say about this story. What do you all think about this? Let me know in the comments. Click like or subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video and make sure you check out my main channel for commentary on life and relationship videos and topics. Till then, hope you all take care of yourselves. Support and be good to good women. Peace.